Chapter 8. Where it all began. Hey, Mum. Inko looked up in surprise. Izuku rarely spoke during meals. There had been a time where it was hard for her to get him to eat at all. Yes, Izuku, she replied tentatively. Um, so, I did what you said to do yesterday, he continued, not looking up from his food. What, what was that, honey? To, um, practice my quirk at school. He was jabbing at the rice with his chopsticks now, clearly nervous about talking to her about this. Oh, she exclaimed. You talked to a teacher? I, um, well, I, I didn't want to talk to anyone. It sort of happened. Right? Inko pushed encouragingly, a smile spreading across her face. It was my homeroom teacher, present Mike. The man on the radio, Inko remembered. Oh, yes. I remember you telling me. He knows JSL, doesn't he? Er, yeah. He was stirring it absentmindedly now. He said my quirk was really cool. See? The teachers at UA aren't like the ones at your old school, Inko said triumphantly. Are you going to eat any more, Izuku? He shook his head and pushed the bowl towards her as she began to tidy away the various cups and bowls strewn across the table. And, and mum, well, he said that if I did well in the sports festival with it, I could make it into the hero course. Inko's hands froze over the tap, turning back to her son. She saw the shaky smile on his face, and before long, her expression matched. R really, Izuku? Oh, that's so wonderful. And singing? Are you sure the quirk was about singing? He nodded surely. I, I figured out how to grow wings and everything. W wings? Yeah, but if I if I want to get into the hero course, I need to sing in the sports festival in front of all those people. Inko stirred the water in the washing up bowl thoughtfully. Well, you could always take singing lessons. No, Mom. I actually, present Mike has a different idea. Uh-huh. Well, he said that all I needed was a little practice and confidence. Yes, but wouldn't that be exactly what singing lessons supply? Inko frowned. She wasn't looking at her son now as she scrubbed the bowls diligently. Izuku got up from his chair and hurried over to her side, drying whatever items she had finished with. Maybe, but not like this, he explained vaguely. Well, are you going to keep me in the dark or tell me what he suggested? She laughed, handing the chopsticks to Izuku. Er, he might have suggested that I go on his radio show with him. Inko froze. On, on his radio show? Today? At about 6.30? I was going to tell you about it last night. But then you got that email saying school would be closed today because of that villain attack, and, well, I kind of forgot. He didn't look her in the eye, furiously wiping off of the remaining suds. Did did you say yes? He tensed up. Um, Izuku, you have to say yes, she insisted, grabbing his shoulders with soapy hands. This is an incredible opportunity. Even if you don't make it onto the hero course, you could end up finding a little job at the radio station. It's linked to his hero agency, you know? Oh, Izuku, please don't tell me you said no. I, I, I said yes. Inko teared up, pulling him into a hug. I'm really proud of you. Th thanks, Mum. he sobbed. But, but I don't know if I can do it. She pulled away, reaching up to cup her son's face in her hands fondly. It It's a radio show. You're not talking to anyone but present Mike face to face. Hardly anyone's had the privilege of hearing your voice before, so they won't know it's you unless you say your name. I'm, I'm not saying my name. I'm going to use a c code name like heroes do. What is it? C canary? Like a songbird, she concluded with a wide smile. When you walk into that radio studio, you aren't Izuku anymore, okay? You're Canary. And Canary can be whoever you want him to be. You can be brave and kind and confident. Everything you are and more. Everything you know you can be. He faltered for a moment, before nodding with a bright smile. I'll be listening for sure. So if you ever feel nervous, just think about me, listening in, and that no one else can hear you. Midori would be lying if he said he didn't already know where present Mike's hero agency was. He knew about a lot of the hero agencies around Musutafu, and because of how much he enjoyed the radio show, President Mike's wasn't an exception. The news was rife with talk of the USJ attack that occurred the day before. It was all anyone was thinking about. Midoriya, however, was a different story. As he stepped off the train and hurried along the streets, his eyes filtered past the billboards covered in information about arrested villains in Class 1A as he scanned the buildings for the telltale sign of the hero agency he was looking for. It didn't take him long to find it. Before he knew it, Midoriya was standing on the doorstep, quite literally shaking in his boots. He must have been there for a while, because the tinted glass door suddenly opened to reveal a blue-skinned lady wearing a pair of headphones over messy indigo hair. She narrowed her eyes at him momentarily before asking, It's Izuku Midoriya, right? Midoriya nodded frantically. The blue lady broke out into a wide smile, flashing a set of rather sharp, pearly white teeth. Well, hey there, canary. Don't be shy, come on in. She held the door open for him and Midoriya stepped hesitantly inside. President Mike said you'd be a bit of a nervous wreck. Not in those words exactly, of course, but that's what you look like. A nervous wreck. 
Reminds me of my first day here. Terrifying, she laughed. I'm Ayazora, by the way. I'm not a pro hero, nor a sidekick, but I do my bit. Midoriya's eyes darted around his new surroundings as Ayazora led him straight to the elevator. There wasn't much to see, first off. Just a brightly colored reception area where several employees chatted happily amongst themselves. They saw Ayazora and gave her a wave. Their gazes drifted over to Midoriya. One gave him finger guns and proceeded to type something on his computer. Ayazora pushed him into the elevator before he could even wave back. So, Ayazora began, tilting her head towards Midoriya and giving him that frightening grin once more. President Mike said you had a singing quirk. That's majorly cool. She pressed the floor number as the doors to the elevator closed. We've got quite a few voice quirk heroes around here. That and the like, listening heroes and stuff. I don't know. I don't really pay attention, she laughed. You see, I help manage the radio aspect of this place now. We crossed over with the hero side quite a lot, but doesn't mean I know everyone's quirk inside and out. Midoriya gulped nervously as the lift began to rise through the building. He got his reflection in the mirrored walls of the elevator. Aozora was right. He did look like a nervous wreck. You listen to our radio, kid? Midoriya nodded anxiously. Good answer, because if you do well, you might be here for a while. Not like, stuck in the building or anything. But you'll probably be hanging around, you know? Quite a few of us here started out like you, with no idea what we're doing and just going with the flow. But hey, the flow worked out, am I right? With a soft ding, the elevator doors opened again. Aozora waltzed out confidently, with Midoriya scurrying along behind her. Here, look. Midoriya ground to a halt beside Aozora. She was pointing through a window at a room filled with rows of computers, most of which had workers sitting behind them, frowning at their screens or talking to someone through their headsets. So if you do listen to our radio, then you'll know about our emergency number, right? Aozora questioned. Midoriya gave her another nod. We're like a hero version of 119. Not that you wouldn't be able to get a hero if you called the emergency services, but our version is purely for our agency. We deal with a lot of domestic violence stuff, kids with mental health problems, crimes or dangerous situations that are a little more out of the public eye. It's not so flashy, but still super important. It's also kind of perfect for the types of quirks our heroes have. Maybe not so much present Mike, he's a little loud, but like other people who can diffuse situations or sneak into places unseen. Midoriya gazed curiously into the room. He remembered hearing President Mike ecstatically announce the telephone number over the air sometimes, saying if you ever needed a hero, to just call up, and they'd be there. I worked in there for a while, and trust me when I say you feel like a real hero, not the kind of guy who wears a fancy costume and who's got an amazing power like yours, but someone who can make a difference, you get what I mean? But it's tough work, really distressing when things don't turn out okay. You got a feel for those guys, she said, nodding towards her colleagues, but they do a good job. Aozora didn't let Midoriya stand there for much longer. She grabbed his wrist and pulled him back down the corridor as she continued to speak, filling in the gaps so Midoriya didn't have to. We've got mainstream heroes too, like present Mike, who go on patrols and protect the neighborhood from the kinds of villains you see in the media. Then we've got the heroes who stay in the background and go to the places they're called to by, well, we call it the white noise team. Those guys back there head the operation, and then more underground type heroes deal with the situation. Get it? Midoriya nodded. He was doing a lot of that, but Aozora wasn't giving him much time to breathe. Before long, they were back in the elevator and heading up higher into the building. Sorry, I just thought you'd want to see that. I love a good tour. We don't give enough of them. Oh, we're almost out of time. Whoops, we'll go straight to the station then. As soon as the doors opened once more, Aozora steered Midoriya into a rather large room that seemed to be designed to be as comfortable as possible. The floor was carpeted, sofas were dotted around everywhere, there was a TV hanging on the wall, although it was permanently muted. There were various computers dotted around the place, besides far too many scary-looking monitors with blinking lights. At the far end was a long window, obscured by a set of beige blinds. A man in a chair sat in front of them, his headphones on, fiddling with various buttons and switches on a complicated-looking panel before him. Hey, Nakano! Erizora crawled out. The man did a double-take before taking off his headphones and turning around in his chair. Ah, is that Canary? Midoriya waved feebly. Nakano laughed. Yamada said you'd be a little nervous. I know it's easier said than done, but try not to worry about it all. Present Mike will be out in a moment. He'll put on a song and then we'll be on our way. With that, he turned back around and put his headphones on once more. Come, sit down with me, Aozora insisted, dragging Midoriya over to a random sofa. She sighed as she took the weight off her feet. God, today's been long. You hear about the villain attack on UA? Oh, of course you have. You go there. Anyway, I was going to take you around the news floor, but it's for the best that we didn't come to think of it. Everyone's in an absolute frenzy over it. But, you see, President Mike won't give us any intel on it for obvious reasons. Not that we're pushing him or anything. There's no need, really. But anyway, we've got what we needed from other sources, but there's still plenty of... Midoriya zoned out pretty quickly. It wasn't as though he wasn't interested, but his mind was elsewhere. First of all, 
oh my god, President Mike had been talking about him to his radio friends, which was a terrifying thought. Then, and rather more urgently, he was about to go on the radio for the very first time. Yeah, there he is! Midoriya nearly jumped out of his skin as President Mike's familiar voice cut through the air. He stood up and turned around, but he was out of his hero costume, and this, for some reason, was not what Midoriya had expected him to look like. He wore rather ordinary, wire-rimmed glasses, unlike the bright yellow shades he usually sported. His hair was long, really long, that much was obvious from the way it was spiked up in his hero costume, but without all the hair gel, it would have hung loosely around his shoulders if he hadn't tied it up in a bun. The only part of his hero costume he still wore was his leather jacket, which was no longer done up, showing a simple white shirt underneath. Midoriya didn't know why the look surprised him so much. Did he seriously expect he looked like present Mike all the time? Ha! yelled Azor. I told you he'd be shocked when you weren't in your hero costume. Midoriya blushed furiously and stared at his shoes in panic. Don't frighten him any more than necessary, Aozora insisted Nakano in a monotone voice as he glanced at the various flashing lights of the monitors built into the wall. Present Mike grasped Midoriya by his shoulders and, in a similar fashion to Aozora, started him into the studio behind the door besides Nakano. Welcome to the studio, he announced, closing the door behind him. The studio looked very much like an extension to the room Midoriya had just left, which he assumed was some kind of waiting room. There was a table in the middle, with four chairs organized around it. Present Mike sat down in his, tapping the microphone that hung by his head and picking up the wireless headset. Pick a chair, any chair, he exclaimed, indicating to the two remaining spaces. Midoriya took the one diagonal to him, closest to the door, which was a coincidence, and not a position he chose so he could escape at a moment's notice. That was only an added bonus. Rather than the seat beside him, which was covered in various piles of paperwork and scripts, or the one opposite to him, which was kind of behind his computer monitor. Midoriya had his own monitor, not that he understood anything on it. He decided it was best to be left alone, evident by the fact that the only main control panel, sharing some similarities to Nakano's, was out of his reach. How are you feeling, little listener? asked the hero, in a much calmer voice than usual. A, a little nervous, Midoriya admitted, repeating what both Nakano and Aozora had said. He was rather surprised the words came out at all. That's okay, President Mike replied. I didn't expect it. Everyone's nervous on their first time on their radio. I've had a lot of other visitors in before. Even pro heroes freak out for the first time. They they do? Yeah! Some heroes are more used to being filmed from afar. They can feel a little trapped in the studio. Can you believe it? Yes. He very much could. Anyway, I've got a song on on the moment. I made sure it was quite a long one. Don't worry. Look at your computer screen. See the word live in the top right hand corner? Midoriya nodded, briefly distracted by the various notifications popping up all over the place. Okay, I've got the master controls over here. In a minute or so, the word live is going to glow bright red. That's how you know your mic is on. He was just continuously nodding now, bobbing his head up and down as his brain went into overdrive. If you put your headphones on, not yet, you'll hear the music playing over the radio, President Mike continued. We're going to be here for about an hour, but don't worry. I've got some really long songs queued up for you this time around, he laughed. When we go on air, I'm going to introduce you and we'll talk about stuff, like having a normal conversation. That's all. Thousands of people are also listening in at the same time. No biggie, thought Midoriya as he fiddled with his headphones in the stress of it all. What are you happy with me saying, kid? questioned the hero. Um, um, what do you mean? Midoriya stammered. Like, can I briefly describe your quirk? Say you go to UA? He nodded hesitantly. I, I'm sure you know best. Present Mike gave him a rather pitiful smile. His eyes flickered towards his monitor for a moment, probably checking how much longer he had left before turning back to Midoriya. What are you thinking of, right now? Cast your thoughts of the radio aside. What else is buzzing around in that big brain of yours? Ay, 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 he stuttered, unsure where his teacher was going with this. Um, well, Midoriya glanced at the closed blinds where he knew Aozora and Nakano were behind them. What, what's Aozora's quirk? Present Mike's grin grew wider. You know, she's never told me. She hasn't? Nope. I guess I could look it up. Where's the fun in that, huh? What do you think it is? Well, she's got blue skin and uh, sharp teeth. Is there some other element that's a little more hidden, or sometimes mutational effects are as a result of underlying features? He carried on like this for a while, spouting out numerous possibilities for Aozora's quirk as President Mike listened on in astonishment. He couldn't go on forever, though. Well, actually, that was up for debate. Mainly because the song President Mike was playing on the radio soon came to an end. Headphones on, little listener, he suddenly interrupted. Blinking, Midoriya was pulled from his thoughts. He hesitated, staring at the headphones, before gingerly pulling them over his head. They were rather comfortable. His own ones tended to hurt after a while, but with these, he could see himself blocking out the entire world for the rest of the year. 
if they weren't connected to the radio, that was. He could hear the song ending, the headphones supplying clear audio quality. He let himself focus on that rather than the whole radio thing for a moment. That was when the little live button looked red, and the hour he'd look back on many, many times in years to come began. Put your hands up radio, Thursdays, 18.30 hours, present Mike's radio show. Present Mike. And the song is over. Wow, you know, that is way longer than I thought it was. It's one of those songs where about halfway through, you think it's ending, but then, surprise, it's not. Anyway, it's Thursday, and you know what that means. I have nothing planned. Thursdays are just one of those days. You catch my drift, you're tired from the week behind you, and it's still not over. Like the song I just played. See what I did there? But this week specifically has been awfully tiring. Isn't that right, co-host? Can I get a yeah? Co-host, uh, uh, y yay? Momentary silence followed by a splutter of laughter. Present Mike, that's got to be the most feeble yeah I've ever heard. Co-host, sorry. Present Mike, as most of you know, I am an English teacher at a well-known hero school of UA. And boy, has this week been long. My little co-host here is one of my many students. He may not be on the hero course, but that doesn't mean his week's been easy going. Co-host, th there was er, yeah, a lot of press outside the front gate. Present Mike, indeed there was. Then we thought we got rid of them, but that horrible incident revolving Hero Class 1A was the catalyst for a whole different kind of trouble. So, after school yesterday, I go around the place checking that everyone's gone home, and who do I stumble across? Why, it's my co-host here, and he's singing. He's got an incredible voice. He's blushing now. Don't give me that look. I feel bad. Okay, so we talked, and he was mean to me, and I discovered, let me finish, I discovered he has this amazing quirk. I've never heard of anything like this before. And I'm not going to say much about it because he's gone so red that I think he might explode. And all I'll say it has to do with his thinking and it's awesome. Alright, I'm done. You don't need to raise your hand. This is in a classroom. Co-host, I, I, what? I wasn't mean to you. I didn't mean to be mean. Present Mike, that was many means right there. Anyhow, what you said was brilliant. Long story short, I'm cockatoo now. Co-host, what was that mean? Present Mike, I can feel my co-producer cackling as we speak. Co-host, I, I, present Mike, it's the hair. I don't know how I never noticed it before, but this little songbird right here is awfully observant. It can be a little scary at times. Anyway, I just realized all of our listeners are going to be very confused because I still don't know who you are. So since I'm cockatoo, this is Canary. Say hi. Canary, um, hi. Present Mike, you are very quiet. Canary, well, well. Maybe you're just very loud. Present Mike. I don't think that's a maybe. Canary. Um, so, I balance you out? Present Mike. Yeah, that's a good point. Canaries are usually quite noisy, though. Canary. Cockatoos are louder. Present Mike. Are they? Trust you to know that. Have you conducted a study on what bird is the loudest? Canary. Um, no. Present Mike. You know, though, don't you? Canary, maybe. Present Mike, then enlighten us. Canary, it's it's the kakapo, a type of parrot. Present Mike, but why? Why waste space in that big brain of yours for information on what birds are the loudest? Canary, but because I wanted to know. The kakapo can reach around 130 decibels in its mating call, and then I think a type of bellbird reaches 100, but the sound of a jet engine can be 140 decibels. Present Mike, you learn something new every day, but why research birds? Canary, honestly? Present Mike, it's because you wondered how loud I could be before I burst someone's eardrums, wasn't it? Canary, possibly? Present Mike, how did I guess? Speaking of studying, when I bumped into Canary yesterday, he explained that he was trying to practice his quirk so he could make a good impression at this year's UA Sports Festival. All eyes are going to be directed towards the hero course, as per usual, but what most viewers fail to consider are the more background students in equally important courses, including the business, support, and general studies departments. As the yearly commentator, it's always super exciting when an underdog rises to the ranks. If they show promise in heroics, my colleagues at UA can consider offering them a place in the hero school. And that's what Canary is aiming. How are you feeling about it all? Canary, I, um, well, I probably won't do that well. I haven't had the practice or opportunities others have, but, but I can try my best. Present Mike, that's the spirit. I have invited Canary here today because, with a quirk like his, he needs confidence if he wants to succeed. 
It's no easy feat, standing in front of all those people and singing, but we all know a little encouragement can go a long way. That's why Canary joined us here on Put Your Hands Up Radio. If I haven't scared him off, maybe I can get him to come back. What do you say? A brief moment of silence follows. Present Mike. He shrugged everybody. That's not a no. Why don't a lot of you help him out? Send us in some questions and your thoughts, but in the meantime, have a little listen to this. Let the worries and stress of the day float away, and we'll be back soon, when the song is up. The live light turned off milliseconds later. Midoriya let out a sigh of relief that he didn't even realize he was holding in as he took off his headphones. Present Mike didn't say anything initially. Midoriya had been bracing himself for an ear-piercing yell, but instead, he gave him a wide grin and an enthusiastic thumbs up. See? He began. That wasn't so bad. What was it? Midoriya cringed. I thought it was horrible. Not at all, President Mike protested. First of all, you spoke. Midoriya blinked at him. It took a moment for the realization to wash over him. He was right. He just talked on the radio. The conversation had felt so natural that the dam between his mind and mouth had become obsolete. Sure, he stuttered and stammered, but he still spoke. Yeah? His teacher grinned, reading the stunned expression on Midoriya's face. What did I say? Confidence. I, I, I guess so. President Mike pushed back off his desk, letting his wheelie chair carry him to the window. He tugged on the blinds to pull them up. Midoriya's gaze was immediately caught by Eozor and Nakano, who both had brilliant smiles on their faces. Nakano pressed one of the many buttons in front of him, speaking into a little microphone fixed in front of him. You did fine there, kid, he insisted. Really, I was worried that you wouldn't speak at all for a moment there, but you did good. Eozor leaned over, pushing Nakano out of the way to reach the microphone. Yeah, Canary! You're really sweet and everyone's going to love you. Trust me on this one. You'll have a fan base in no time. I will head it. Guaranteed. What's that bird called? A kaka- what's it? Present Mike strained to remember. K- kakapo, Midoriya replied nervously. How on earth did you remember that? I- I don't know. I just know a lot of random facts, he admitted with a shrug. But why? He cut himself off. Actually, no. We'll have this conversation on air. Wait a second. Let me just see if we have any responses online yet. Present Mike pulled the blinds back down. Eozora kept waving, making her seat sink down as she was obstructed from view. It made Midoriya's smile stretch a little further across his face. It wasn't long before the song came to an end and they were back on air. But there was a new life to Midoriya's. No, Canary's voice as the hour crept by. He remembered his mother's worries from earlier that day. When you walk into that radio studio, you aren't Izuku anymore, okay? You're Canary. And Canary can be whoever you want him to be. You can be brave and kind and confident. Everything you are and more. Everything you know you can be. Yeah, he could get used to this.